start with number one. It says, what is the value of the underlined digit in words? So again, we're gonna look at the number. This is seven and 264, and what place value is that? We have the tenths, we have the hundredths, and we have the thousandths. So this number is worth four thousandths. So when we look down here, we have 400. It's not 100. 100 is a whole number, it would be over here. Four tenths, that's the tens place. Four hundred deaths, that's what we're looking for, the D with the TH. And then this is four thousandths. So this is our tenths, this is our hundredths, and this is our thousandths. So this would be the correct answer, okay? All right, we're looking at this. This is five eighths times 64, okay? We know that times means of. We've talked about that a lot in class. It's saying shade the model to help you. So let's shade the model first and then we'll actually do the math. So we have 5 eighths times 64 or it's 5 eighths, what is 5 eighths of 64? Well, if we're looking for something a little bit of something else, then this should be our whole. So let's count and see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So each of these rows has eight in it. Well, let's sing our eight song. Eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, and 56, 64. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be eight times eight, which is, in, which is 64. So if we're gonna shade five of the eight, then that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. That's five of this eight. So we're gonna shade five of all the eights. So we would go, and I'm gonna do it a little bit quicker so we can just go across like this. We have shaded five of each of the eights. So once we do our math, our answer should match however many that we have shaded. Okay, so let's do our math. So we have five eights times 64. Well, guys, when we multiply, remember when we multiply by a whole number, we have to turn it into a rational number, so we have to put a one under it, and that way we're t essentially multiplying fractions, right? When we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across, but guys, this is a pretty big number. So we can absolutely multiply 64 times five or we can do what we taught, what I taught you guys. We can look diagonally and ask ourselves, is there any way that we can cross reduce? Can we simplify diagonally? Well, the five and the one are not gonna change because one doesn't change anything. So we're looking at eight and 64 and we just ask ourselves, what factors do these two numbers have in common? Well, we know they have two in common because they're both even. Um, we know four goes into eight. Does four go into 64? Well, it does. Is there anything bigger that goes in? Well, does eight go into 64? Because we wanna ask that question really first because if it does, we know that's what we can simplify by. So eight does go into 64 if we sing our eight song. It'll get us to 64, so let's just do that really fast. Eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, and 56, 64. So eight times eight is 64. So if you can cross simplify, all you're doing is you're dividing Whatever the biggest factor they have in common, you're dividing by that right now. So if the biggest common factor we have, the greatest common factor is eight, we're gonna divide both of these by eight. So eight divided by eight is one, 64 divided by eight is eight, and now we're just gonna multiply straight across. So five times eight is 40, and one times one is one. So remember guys, this is a division sign. So 40 divided by one is just the whole number 40. Okay, so if we come back over here, remember, one of the things that we've learned too is fraction divided by whole is always going to give us a fraction. So we have a fraction, excuse me, divided, wrong thing, this is multiplication, sorry. Scratch this, we'll learn that later. <laughs> so we're multiplying this and we got 40. So if that's correct, we should be able to count these and we should have shaded 40, okay? So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, times one, two, three, four, five, and eight times five is 40. So we did that correctly, okay? All right, so number three says the auditorium at RHS has 1,120 seats and 40 equal rows. Draw a model and write an equation that can be used to find S, the number of seats in each row. Okay, so if we're gonna do this, we're gonna kind of we're gonna do what I taught y'all instead of drawing a model. We're just gonna do part part whole. 
because it's always the best thing to do when you're looking at two numbers and you know we're trying to figure out how many how many if there's 40 rows and this is how many total seats then we're looking for our whole okay so what's our whole gonna be well we've got a thousand one hundred and twenty seats and we have to divide those into 40 rows because it says these 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 number of seats and there's gonna be 40 equal rows and we're trying to figure out how much is how many seats are in each row okay so we've got 120 excuse me 1120 is our whole and we have a part our part is only 40 okay this is what we're missing so this is our s this is our seats so if we're looking and we know this is part part whole we know this is either addition or subtraction or we know it's multiplication and division well we know it's not addition and subtraction so we know it's multiplication and division and if this is our whole we don't have we know we don't have both of these numbers so we know we can't multiply so we know we're going to be dividing 100 oh my goodness sorry guys 1120 divided by 40. so our equation is going to be s equals 1120 divided by 40. so that's the question that's the if that's the equation that we're going to write we're looking for number of seats so we're going to take and we're going to do the math and we're going to do 1,120 divided by 40. Okay, now one thing we can do, just so you guys know, if both of our dividend and divisor have a zero, we can technically just cancel those out, and then we're only going to have 1,000, excuse me, 112 divided by 4, and that's much easier to divide. Obviously, single digit is easier than double digit. So 4 goes into 11. How many times? 4, 8, 12. It's going to go in twice. 4 doesn't go into 1, so our 2 needs to go above the 11. 2 times 4 is 8. We subtract. 11 minus 8 is 3. We bring down our 2, and 4 goes into 32. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. So it goes in 8 times. So our zeros canceled each other out. So how many seats are going to be in each row? Our answer is going to be 28. Okay? So S equals 28. That's our final answer. Okay, we're looking at number four. It says, what is the volume of this rectangular prism? Okay, again, guys, we think about formulas. Anytime we're finding volume, we know we have a formula for that. Remember, you can always look at your reference sheet, and this is going to give you all your formulas, okay? So if this is a rectangular prism, you can look on here, and it says rectangular prism right here. Here's volume equals length times width times height or volume equals base times height. So which one of these are we going to use? Well, we don't have our base. We've been given our length, width, and height. So we're definitely going to use that formula. So we're going to use volume equals length times width times height. And then we're going to figure it out. Okay? So we're going to do volume equals length times width times height. We don't know the volume, so we're going to bring down our V. Our length is going to be 34. Our width is going to be 15. And our height is going to be 71. So we're going to have to solve this now, which this is going to be some pretty big um, multiplication. It says we just have to write the equation, but I want to do more than that because I want to show you guys how to do this. So this is what it's asking for right here it's just asking for the equation but let's go ahead and multiply this because you guys are ready for this okay so it doesn't really matter which one we pick because they're both double digits so let's go ahead and just do 71 times 15 we have 5 times 1 is 5 7 times 5 is 35 1 times 1 is 1 7 times 1 is 7 we add these together we have 5 6 and 10 so we're gonna have 1065 right here so we did this math okay so we got 1765 times 34 okay so now we've got 1765 times 34 so 5 times 4 is 20 carry the 2 <clears throat> 4 times 6 is 24 25 26 carry the 2 4 times 7 is 28 plus 2 is 30 carry the 3 4 times 1 is 4 plus, one, plus 3 is 7. We've used our 4. We're done with all of that. We can cross it off. We can put our 0 placeholder. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. 
Six times three is 18, plus one is 19, carry the one. Seven times three is 21, plus one is 22, carry the two. And three times one is three, plus two is five. So we've got zero, we've got 11, carry the one, we've got 10, carry the one, we have seven, eight, nine, 10, carry the one, and we have a six. We have no decimals in our numbers, so we're just gonna count back three and put our comma. So the volume for this rectangular prism is 60,010, and our unit of measure is centimeters, and we found the volume, so it's cubed. So that's actually the answer to the problem, okay? So practice your multiplication. All right, plot point A at the location. So again, guys, anytime we're plotting, remember that this is our X and this is our Y. Here's our X, here's our Y. We always start at the origin. We have to walk before we fly. So we're gonna walk over to our three, one, two, three. We're gonna go up to four and a half. Remember this is four and five tenths, which is four and a half, okay? So if we're at three, we're gonna go at four and a half. Well, there, we don't have the half marks, but we know if this is four and this is five, that four and a half is gonna be right in the middle, okay? So that is gonna be our plot A. All right, we are gonna do some pretty easy multiplication now. So we have eight times three is 24, carry the two. Eight times two is 16, plus two is 18, carry the one. Eight times two is 16, plus one is 17. We put our zero placeholder, we're done with our eight, we're done with that being, that being carried. We start with our four, we have four times three is 12, carry the one, four times two is eight plus one is nine, and four times two is eight. We add these numbers together, we've got four, eight plus two is 10, carry the one, we look for tens, nine plus one is 10, plus seven is 17, carry the one, we have eight, nine, 10. We don't have any decimals, so we count three over, and there's our answer, okay? All right, we're gonna divide. Look what we've got in the dividend. We have a decimal, so don't forget we have to float the bobber. So before y'all do any division, float that bobber to your, to your quotient so you don't forget, okay? All right, we always take the divisor and we round it. Is 33 closer to 30 or 40? Well, it's closer to 30, so we put a little three. That's our little friend for later if we need it. So we start and say, does 33 go into three? Well, it doesn't. So you can either put an X or a zero or just leave it blank. How many times does 33 go into 35? Well, that's easy. It only goes in once. So we put our 33 and we subtract. Three minus three is zero. Five minus three is two. We make sure our subtraction is smaller. It is, so we can bring down our six. Does 33 go into 26? Okay, guys, it doesn't. And don't forget, this is the biggest common mistake fifth graders make, is you forget to put your zero in your quotient. So if 33 does not go into 26, you have to say zero. It goes in zero times. Then you can bring down your four. Now we're coming over to our little friend, because this is the friend that's gonna help us find our number without having to do a lot of extra multiplication, okay? So we ask ourselves, about how many times does three go into 26? Well, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and 28, okay? So it's going to go in, okay, I have no idea why I just did that. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and 27. Okay, that's too much, so we've got 8. So let's start with 8. Once we find that number, that's what we multiply by our, di by our divisor. So let's do 33 times 8. 8 times 3 is 24, carry the 2. 8 times 3 is 24, 25, 26. We look, oh, that's exactly what we wanted, so it was an 8, and that is our answer.